for today's challenge, we are going to go ahead and turn Walmart into a luxury brand. Let's see if I can do this or if I'm going to fail epically. Okay, so when I set out to do this challenge, I first wanted to actually understand Walmart. Now, as somebody who doesn't live in the States, I've heard all of the wives' tales and the fairy tales about good old Walmart and all the cool things you can find there, not necessarily all comes on the shelves. So I really wanted to understand Walmart first and I wanted to kind of get a feel for what it was originally for and how it got to where it is today so that I can try and provide a semi-realistic background for this project. Now it's key to keep in mind obviously in the real world of branding a project like this is relatively unlikely. There is not usually going to be situations where a massive a department store like Walmart with a very established customer base and a product that is really working will come across and totally rebrand themselves. But why an exercise like this is really important for a designer or is a really great exercise is the challenge of using design to change the narrative. And I think that this is really a really good exercise to try. So what I've done is I've pulled up some key things here to look at for Walmart. So in my research, I wanted to have a look at what the visual design of Walmart used to look like and, and kind of how it's ended up where it is now. Because I think some of the things for me when going into this rebrand is I want to honor some of the original design elements while still trying to give it that premium edge because I think this is going to add a layer of challenge and whereas it would be super easy to just change the color palette to something super luxurious and change the font and do all of those cool things it would be so easy theoretically I want to see if I can keep it as realistic as possible so I want to keep the ethos the same um, with a potential shift in audience of course I actually want to try and honor the color palette still, so that beautiful iconic blue and yellow, um, and see if I can tweak it just slightly to give it more of a premium feel without losing the spirit of it. And then I want to keep in mind some of the key visual aspects, which is obviously the iconic Walmart star. So I want to see if I can bring that in. So in my research, I discovered that the Walmart brand is is a is actually a great one it's got a wonderful story and i really enjoyed reading through but some of the things that i really noticed is is that it's gone from for example it's gone from something that was very simple to something that had lots of culture feels very western um and definitely feels very sort of main road in a western town this is where you can come and get all your things from so i get that and then we've got the red which i thought was very interesting and then it starts coming back to the blue and then we've got this very memorable walmart blue with the star so the star hasn't always been there but it is definitely now a very iconic part of the brand so we are going to see if we can try and keep that going and then on the walmart website itself there is actually the full story and the history of the brand and where it came from. And this is a really great page to read through. I think it's very easy to sort of um, joke about Walmart and all of its ridiculousness, but actually at the heart of the brand, there's a really cool story. So if anybody's interested, you can come and have a look here. But this really inspired me because I saw the history and I saw this use of great typography, which I don't see much in the brand visuals actually so that was interesting but I liked how they told the story and so one of the key things for me for this rebrand is going to be making sure that I honor that sense of heritage and history because I think that there's a really nice way to bring that into the design and give it that premium feel without losing that spirit like I said so there's some timeline elements here there's distribution center general office um so this is a really cool page where I got a lot of insight from. I started seeing what the interiors look like, which is obviously going to make a big difference when you're rebranding something that has a physical venue. Part of creating that luxury experience is understanding that the brand will need to translate 
into a physical experience as well. Now, Walmart has got a very famous <laughs> physical experience. Um, and if you enjoy the internet at all, I'm sure you will have seen some of the delightfully weird and wonderful things that can be seen there. So what we are aiming to do for this theoretical rebrand is to shift the positioning and to make sure that we sort of bring Walmart in line with some of the other more premium department stores available. So in order to do this semi-accurately, I wanted to have a look at some of the other luxury or premium department stores available in the States. So keep in mind, I'm not from the States. I know very little. So I'm taking it with a pinch of salt and I'm going to learn what I can. So I found this really great article on the Merchant Tree where they compare some of the best luxury department stores in the US and talk about some of the key features and then also show us some pictures of the interiors to give us some inspiration. So having a look through this article, a couple of places really stood out to me. The first one is Barney's in New York. And I think everybody knows, <laughs> everybody knows or has heard of Barney's, at least I have. And it was quite interesting to read a little bit about the story um, and some of the controversy around the brand. But I wanted to just anchor from a design perspective on this little signage here and to look at this really beautiful clean typography and how a lot of these luxury department stores have chosen to do the facades around the actual stores themselves. Now, that is not what we're doing today, but it is key to keep in mind that a logo design like this would need to be applied to signage. So I want to keep that in mind when going through the process. Then there's this Sakes or Saks Fifth Avenue, which I've also heard of. It sounds very familiar. Um, and I love that this one was a bit different in the sense that it's got this scripty font uh, for its logo. Not sure if that's the direction we're going to take today, but cool to look at. Another one that was at the back of my mind when I started this project was, of course, Nordstrom. And I have heard a lot about this department store and I know that they do a very good job. They are also very strong online. Their e-commerce platforms are apparently very strong and they hold some really great brands. Um, and they've got a really good reputation for holding that sort of like upper class, um, slightly more premium product ranges. Also a very simple and low um, modern logo. So we'll keep that in mind. Then we've got a couple of these as well. And then another one that I looked at, which was in my mind, was Bloomingdale's, of course. And I know that Bloomingdale's interiors are, at least as far as I'm concerned, quite well known. And so I wanted to keep that in mind. But I think one of the most surprising things for me was actually looking at the Bloomingdale's logo and going, oh, well, that's totally not what I was expecting. <laughs> so this is interesting. I think this is why, you know, an exercise like this can be quite interesting because, of course, we all have have slightly different interpretations of what looks premium and what doesn't. So I think when it comes to department stores and shopping experiences, there's a couple of factors. So the first one, of course, is um, the visual identity itself and the logo style and all of that, the color palettes, etc., that you use. But then also for a department store, it's the interiors. And like I said, the physical space and that experience. So when I'm designing, I'm obviously not going to be designing an interior, but I do want to keep in mind some of the materials that might be used or kind of how that might look. So from this phase, I jumped, of course, into Pinterest to have a look if I could pull together some inspiration for a more premium department store look. And some of the key things that I was looking for were logo styles that gave me both a premium feel, but also still leverage that heritage and that story feel because for the repositioning of Walmart want to focus instead on the history and heritage it's been around a long time it knows what it's doing um, and so theoretically that would be what I was aiming at and probably wanting to position it in the same space as Bloomingdale's slash Nordstrom obviously with a hint at the grocer side as well so with that in mind, let's jump straight into Pinterest and the mood board and see what direction we're going to take for the rebrand. All right, jumping straight into Pinterest, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've pulled together and some of the things that I was looking at while thinking about where I want to go with this brand. 
So some of the first things I was thinking about was going, okay, well, obviously the physical store, like I said, is going to need to change. So theoretically, if that was going to be the case, then I want to have a look at what some of the other sort of luxury stores out there are doing with their interiors. Because for me, context and environment really do inform how we do design. So the thoughts here were to have a look at how some brands are doing signage and what the interiors of like a really premium grocer might look like. Um, but then I, I also just wanted to pin a couple of things that made me feel um, that traditional feel and that heritage feel of there being a history and a story to tell and working out a way to create balance. I also thought for the brand what might be nice is some sort of visual device. You know, I saw this little chicken and these handwritten types, but then immediately thought, mm, it still feels a little too playful and organic. And I don't think what we're going to do for this brand is we're not going to go the typical route of making this a green grocer or necessarily like an eco-friendly one. Whereas I think all brands these days need to be environmentally responsible. We're not going to sort of die on that hill with this rebrand. We are going to go for a more quality, luxury, refined experience um, to attract a slightly higher end market with a slightly bigger budget. And we're going to, again, like I said, position ourselves next to the Nordstrom and the Bloomingdale's and make it more of like a boutique. So um, we want to go for classic and premium, but we also don't want to go too overtly modern and boring. <laughs> so we want to have a little bit of character in there. So I love the idea of doing a monogram. Obviously, we want to hold the, the heritage of the brand with that little star and see if I can maintain that. And then obviously want to see if I can challenge myself to work with that color palette. Now, as you can see from this Pinterest board, when you're looking at luxury, you're looking at darker, deeper tones, um, often neutral colors will classically scream premium. So I've really set myself a challenge to try and work with that blue and the yellow. So let's go into actually creating the mood board and seeing if I can pull together a direction that's going to set us in good stead for redesigning Walmart into a luxury brand. Okay, so we have now created the mood board for the creative direction of the Walmart rebrand. And I think, I think we're gonna be all right. So <laughs> it was a real challenge to try and get the blue and the yellow in. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna try the yellow, but what I thought we could do is replace the yellow with gold. Um, so I thought that might be quite useful. And then obviously being inspired by Bloomingdale's interiors and looking at these sort of these shapes, really liked the idea of a stacked logo because it gives you that premium feel while not being totally inaccessible. And again, speaks to heritage, story, etc. I thought it'd be nice to sort of put the tagline and the slogan in there and make use of the star. And then I was also looking at obviously these beautiful premium stores often leveraged texture. So I'm looking at the wood, I'm looking at the stone, the gold, there's again, there's some wood, really neatly packed. And then of course, packaging and things like that. So finding a way to have a more premium look and feel for the packaging or for the grocery bags or shopping bags or whatever that is. And then a simple sort of way that we could upgrade the exterior. Keeping in mind that realistically, obviously, if Walmart were to do a rebrand like this, they would have to rebrand thousands and thousands of stores. And you can't just go ahead. Well, theoretically, you could. But for this challenge, I'm going, OK, so what is the easiest way to upgrade the exterior of a Walmart and not totally gut it and have to rebuild an entire new, new building? Well, we could look at a coat of paint different type of signage and possibly some decals or plant life in the exterior. So I'll just be keeping that roughly in mind. We're not actually going to be designing the exterior or the interior. Like I said, we're going to be looking at applying the new branding to some packaging, maybe some coupon or loyalty cards. Um, we'll look at the shopping bag, maybe a signage mock-up if I can, if I can find a really good one. But the call for this is to see if we can translate the color palette of that blue, yellow slash gold and change up the look and feel to feel more premium. So with that being said, 
I want to focus on creating some sort of visual icon, possibly moving the star into a supporting element and to come up with something using the W that gives it that premium feel. So looking at a monogram or something like that. Um, I want, like I said, a nice stacked, super rich, detailed logo, um, maybe more along the lines of this one for the general store that can be translated into something simpler for signage. Um, but it's going to look really nice and rich on things like information booklets, um, catalogs, and of course the e-commerce version of whatever this might become, then the packaging, etc. So this is our inspiration. We are now going to jump straight into the design process and we're going to start as always with seeing if we can find ourselves a new typeface for the Walmart word mark. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to jump across to here and what I've got right now is the original Walmart logo and I'm already sort of not loving the blue and the yellow, but this is our focal point, so we're going to have to stick with it. I'm going to bring our mood board across so that I've got that to look at as well. And one of the key things I want to look at now, obviously, like I said, is finding a font. So from our mood board inspiration, we can go two ways. We can go sort of sans serif, which is the classic kind of Nordstrom look. So we go for hypermodern. But I think what I want to try and do is leverage Walmart's kind of heritage and history and go for a logo type that's a little bit more classic. So still refined, still luxury, but classic. So we're going to look for a serif or a semi-serif or something like that that's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in, see if I can find some fonts, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we have settled on a couple of nice premium serif fonts, all classics, I would say. So we've got ourselves Mrs. Eves, we've got ourselves Bodoni, Garamond, we've got this cool one from Google Fonts called Nanum, and we've got Boscoville. And really what I'm aiming to do is try and like fall into this look and feel here and also taking inspiration from Boutique. Originally, I mean, already I think Bodoni is too too thin and too narrow. I want something that's got a bit more stretch to it. The reason being is the original Walmart logo has also got a bit of width to it. And while I'm rebranding, and so the idea is not to keep it the same, I do want to, I, I don't want to go totally on the other end of it because I think that there still needs to be a warmth to the brand and there still needs to be that kind of a feel. So... The thought for me is, is that I'm sitting either with this one or possibly with this one. Although I must say, I really like Nanum's W. So we're looking at maybe this one, Cormorant, Gamorant, and we've got Mrs. E's. I wonder if there's an alternate W. So we do have a normal W here. Do we have another W for basketball? I'm interested as to whether or not Basketball has actually got some glyphs or some alternate letter forms that we could use. It doesn't look like it, which I find very interesting. Um, okay, so I think what we might do is stick with Cormorant Gamorond, Garamond, listen to me, which is very interesting because I did a type specimen study on this exact font back in college, which was really interesting for me to learn about this font and its creation. And knowing what I know about the font, I do think that this is gonna do a good job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these other fonts plus some of the others that I played with out of the way. And we're gonna work with Cormorant, Gamorant, Garamond. I'm not going to say that right through this whole video, just a trigger warning now for anybody. Um, so we're going to work with this font and we're going to go ahead and create that. Now, if anybody is interested in creating color palettes from mood boards, um, I think that here's a trick that you can use within Illustrator. So obviously um, you take a screenshot, 
bring it in so that it's an image, so that it's rasterized. And then basically what you can do is you can go in, and let me just first actually figure out how to do this first. I've now completely forgotten. I've completely forgotten how to do this. I've completely forgotten how to do it. Okay, no, never mind. Let's go back a bit. Go back to the part before I was talking about color palettes. <laughs> okay. Right. So the first thing I think I'm going to do, which is usually actually the last thing I do, but today for the sake of this and for the sake of focus, I want to bring out a color palette to work with just so that I've got that in mind. Now, obviously we're going for something nice and organic. Um, I'm wondering whether or not this blue needs to be a bit darker. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more richness here and maybe we work with a darker blue like that. And then obviously I want the gold tone too. So let's see if maybe we don't work with maybe this wood tone, but we go with a gold. And now I usually try and pull my golds from here-ish and we work See, it's looking a little mustard yellow at this stage. But now I'm just pulling colors just to see. And let's pull the original Walmart colors as well and just have a look at those because that's always going to be interesting. Obviously, I can pull the actual color codes, but just for the sake of just brainstorming. So if I take these now and we go to actually creating a darker shade of this actual blue, which will be quite nice to work with. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, so we've got a tint down here, which so we could drop this into a gold. And then we've got the Walmart colors, but toned to be the right kind of vibe there. Okay, so what we're first going for is I want to create that sense of the heritage. So the Walmart star is the one, two, three, four, five, six little star points. So I definitely want to bring the star in. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't use the exact Walmart star from the actual thing or whether we should go back to the original star from the original logo. So if we jump back into the history here and we have a look, or maybe even from here, we have a look at what that original star looked like there. They had a little twirly twirl there or a dash, and then it's now turned into a single word and they've put the star at the end, which um, has its own meaning. But I think what, of course, what we'll try and do is use the star to represent luxury and quality. So let's go into our shape tool. We want six points. Okay, there's our six point star. And now we can actually create, I think as far as I know, when you hold down Alt, you can do some interesting things with the star tool. So you can create interesting shapes. But what I wanna do is turn it round so that our top two, I'm gonna get the ruler, make a straight line, because ideally, if possible, I would like our star to sit on this axis instead of, there we go, possibly instead of the other axis, which might look a bit weird, but fits with the original. So if I bring in some color, now it is my advice as always to work with black and white first, but often in the creative process, if I know I want to be working with color, I will sometimes do that straight away. So I'm thinking that we're gonna have the stars representing five stars for quality, possibly. So that's an idea. And then we've got the Walmart typeface here. Now, the first thing I really wanna do is create some sort of a monogram or some sort of recognizable icon for the brand using the W. And one of the first things I really wanna try is turning it into a crown. So it might look a bit 
strange to try and do that with this W. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just give it a go using the pencil tool. So let's jump straight into creating outlines out of this W. And I think the first thing I want to just try is sketching just over the top of it using my pencil tool, just quite literally to see what it might look like if I create a loop. Okay, so it's going to do that. That's fine. <laughs> Now, please take this with a pinch of salt, everybody watching, because <laughs> obviously I'm going to refine this. Um, let's go out and just bring in my pencil tool here. And this is quite cool over here, but let's see if I can maybe take this pencil tool. So what I might need to do is grab my eraser and just take out some of these bits. Obviously would like to make this a little bit more refined, but I think we've got a nice sort of concept here. Okay, so it's obviously key to note that usually I'm the first one to advocate jumping into a sketchbook and actually creating a sketch of the logo first. But I must be honest, sometimes when I've got a very clear picture in my head and I kind of just want to go with it, then I will sometimes just do that. I'll jump straight into Illustrator and I'll keep going. And then what I'll actually do is I'll come back to my sketchbook and do some sketches after the fact. So what I want to do is just play with this as a concept just for now. And I actually want to bring in one of our stars and have a look if I can't create something that looks a little bit more interesting, just conceptual wise. Okay, starting to look a bit strange. Let's not do that. Let's just not, let's just not do that. I'm wondering what it would look like if it had two little elements like this, just on either sky. Now I am full blown sketching with Adobe Illustrator right now. I'm not taking anything too seriously. I'm just playing with the general idea Mm, looks too much like an M. Scrap that. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do is kind of get a little closer to this look and feel here. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe we could even go for a little circle or something in the middle there to represent sort of the top. Or possibly even, do you know what's just happened to my brain here? I'm going, it might look a bit like a fish, but anyway, this little thing looks like a little location symbol. And half of one of Walmart's biggest selling points is the fact that it's got a Walmart pretty much anywhere. So there's this location and destination thing as well, which I could play off of. Does it look premium? I don't know yet. I'm still deciding. Um, but there we've got a concept there to work with. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually pop this Walmart text onto a curve and how you do that or how I do it is I draw out a circle and what I will then do is copy this text, hold down alt and the type tool onto the circle and you can type on the path. I'll then paste that. I'll then make sure my text is centered so that it pops to the center of the circle. I'll just flip it over so then I've got my text on a path. Now I'm already seeing that I'm not totally loving the kerning and the spacing that's going on here. So I want to come in and manually actually affect this. And you can do that a number of different ways using the type tools. Um, I'm just going to be using the kerning here. Well, this is the tracking one. Okay. Creating a bit of space there. We need a bit of space here. And actually we need a bit of space overall. So the nice thing about doing this now is that you can actually create or you can change the shape of this tool or this shape quite literally 
um, and it'll affect the text. So it's not like you changing the shape of the expanded word or anything like that. And then you can affect this spacing. So now I've just seen that this doesn't look right over there. So I'm going to bring that in a bit. And now we've got our Walmart on our curve. Is the curve the right curve? I'm not sure. I'm going to copy and paste it, work with it down here a bit. And then I'm actually going to just create outlines out of this one so that I can just work with the shape. Okay. Now this tagline or this descriptor, I'm taking from this top inspiration here just to sort of see what it'll look like if we bring in just a type version. And if we grab one of our stars, Center that. I'll check the measurements of this in a second, but just eyeballing it. I think what we could do is use the stars in here, but I'm already deciding that the stars look weird with six. So I'm going to change it back to five and I'm going to use them at their normal rotation. One. Make them blue, position them. Okay, so we've got something cool going on here. Um, I do think we need our icon, but we're gonna come back. What I do like about this one is like the scripty font that there's this little bit of extra position kind of context here. So the nice thing is, is that Garamon comes with an italic version. And let's go and find the foundation date. First opened in 1962. So let's go since 1962, which I love the idea of doing. And we have it there. And maybe we need a little bit more strength on these ones. So let's go for adding this one into a semi-bold and this one into a semi-bold italic. Okay, so we've got some, we've got a little gist of something going on here. And what I really do want to do is work to craft that little W crown. So what I'm probably going to do from this point onwards is I'm quite happy with where this is going in terms of looking a little bit more premium and a little bit more prestigious. Um, I really like the idea of that blue on the cream. So if I just bring this out into here, and we group that, create a duplicate, pop it in the middle. What I'm going to do is just for preview sake, so I'm going to outline all of that, turn this into the cream. And let's turn the background into the blue. And then we've already got quite a cool new logo look happening here which does look quite premium now i think obviously it would be quite a lot easier to just put this into a super modern sans serif font as uh, a nice tracking or coning and call it a day but i really want to focus on this sort of premium heritage look and so really want some nice embossing and some really beautiful stuff happening so what i'm going to do is i'm going to whip out my sketchbook I'm going to make some sketches and see if I can get this W monogram going and then we'll jump back into Illustrator and carry on. I think for this one we want a beautiful premium monogram 
which is kind of going to be reminiscent of this ampersand over here from this inspirational point here, because I think I want to keep the typography quite clean and versatile, because obviously for signage, that's going to work really, really well. And then this sort of stamped onto the bottom of shopping bags is going to look beautiful as well. But that icon is going to look really nice for stickers and for coupon codes, coupon cards, loyalty cards, whatever, um, and obviously overarching support branding. So adding this to other brands when they're co-branding items. So I'm going to jump into my sketchbook. I'm going to do some sketching and then I will see you back in Illustrator in a few minutes. Okay, so we are jumping back in. It's been a little while and I've spent some time just refining a few details and working with the rebrand. And I think I'm more or less happy with where we are leaving things off. So on my screen, you can see that I've just pulled together a summary of the elements that we've got to work with. And from here on, we're gonna go ahead and start applying these to mockups because that is of course, one of the best ways to showcase how a brand would live and breathe in the real world. So I'm excited to get into that. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at what we've created here. So we've got our main logo or our primary or master logo here which has got our emblem, our important date since 1962, the Walmart, of course, and then a tagline, Grocery and Provisions. Now, um, I want to add that obviously Grocery and Provisions is not the Walmart tagline currently, and I pulled that straight from the mood board from the previous one, but I thought it was something that like really needed to be there. Um, and I always think, you know, with these fancy logos, a descriptor line is usually very helpful. Um, and then we've got our secondary logo lockup here, which is just a fun nod to sort of the old, um, old logos we used to see back in the day. These remind me of things like delis and strip malls and things like that. So I have noticed that this little guy is a bit off center, but uh, we'll fix that before we go into the mockups. Then we've got ourselves a brand pattern here, which has been inspired by the emblem or the monogram, as well as the little Walmart star. And I'm just thinking while I'm here, I'm going to jump into swatches. And by the way, this is a quick tip. If you're working with your seamless patterns and you want to go and change something, it's super easy. You just come over here to your swatches panel and double click on your pattern swatch. And then it takes you in and you can change things. I actually want to take this and I want to bring in the brand yellow. Okay, I can't do that unless it's a swatch. So let's do this. Add our swatches in. And now we can change the brand pattern to include the yellow. So I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna click my little star. And now do I want one yellow star? I think so. We're gonna click done. Now we're talking. Okay, cool. Awesome. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the format of this pattern. So what you do here is you right click on this and then you go transform and scale. And then what you want to do is make sure you've got preview on so you can see what you're doing. But you actually want to switch off transform objects because then of course this just transforms it inside the binding box or the bounding box. Um, and it, it just changes the pattern size as opposed to the whole shape size. So I'm going to go OK. And then I'm actually going to transform again. And this time I'm going to rotate again, switching off transform objects and switching on preview. Now I'm happy with that. That looks very cool. I love the yellow Walmart star. We've managed to keep it there, but we've refined it a bit. And then we've got a fun little badge too as well. So from here, what we're going to do is I'm going to jump in and I'm going to pull some mockups. And I think what I'm going to look at doing is we're going to do a loyalty card, maybe a gift card. Um, and maybe what we'll do is some shipping packaging because Walmart typically ships things in boxes, a bit like Amazon. So I wanna look at doing a custom design for a shipping box for them, and then maybe a gift bag or something along those lines. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump onto Invato Elements, which is where I get all of my mockups from, as well as a couple of other sites, but that's the one that I find the easiest to 
So I'm going to jump in, find some mock-ups that I like, and I'm going to pull those together and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, so I've pulled a couple of key mock-ups and I'm going to walk you through them now and we're going to talk about why things like this are super important. So for, for Walmart, for the new Walmart, <laughs> which still sounds very strange to me, I thought the most important thing, of course, is their e-commerce space because... At the same time of them having very prevalent uh, physical stores, they've also got an online system where people can buy things online and have it shipped to them. So I'm taking that angle because um, in today's day and age, obviously the online shopping space is growing exponentially. And so I thought, well, what better way to modernize the brand and to bring it into that sort of super premium space than having a really premium online retail space. So I've literally just redone the homepage uh, with a, a basic idea of, of how I pictured it and giving them a sort of a little menu and a very premium sort of updated photography direction, put the logo in the middle. So it feels a lot more specialized and a lot more premium than what the existing website looks like. The existing website is very clunky and very basic looking. So this updated design definitely takes it into that premium space. The next one is obviously just looking at what packaging, gift cards, all sorts of things like that might look like. And we've done a beautiful gold foiling um, on some white linen paper, which I think is just by nature, very premium. So the gold is kind of obviously an add-on from the yellow. So gold versus yellow, gold is way more premium. So we've got that going on. And I think the logo really shines in this lockup. Then we've got ourselves just a little uh, gift card. And here we've used the brand pattern at the background of where those cards would go. And then just a very simple gift card, which obviously would have all the legal information on the back. And then we've got a loyalty card. Um, I don't know, you know, I think it would depend entirely on, on the, the use case of this, but I always think that some sort of loyalty card, some sort of rewards program or something like that, despite the fact that this is a premium store, a lot of premium stores do have a reward system like this. So for this one, it's kind of like you have to spend a certain amount and then you get 25% off your purchase, got some social media links, etc. And then as promised, we've got our packaging mock-up, which is just a good old cardboard box. But I think there's still many ways in which you can make a cardboard box look nice. <laughs> so this is a really cool way for me, at least in my mind, to make it look really premium. We've got the pattern, walmart.com, and then the logo and the badge mixed together. And then we've got a beautiful look and feel there. So that's it for the mock-ups and that's it for the Walmart rebrand. You can let me know in the comments what you think of this, whether I nailed it or failed it. Um, personally, this was quite a challenge because you have such a preconceived idea of what the brand looks like in your head that it's actually really difficult to push yourself away from that. So in that sense, this is a really good exercise to test out my skills at sort of translating a pre-existing idea into something totally different. So yeah, we've definitely gone for a more sort of ornate look, whereas you could definitely modernize this brand on the total opposite scale and follow the trend of the rest of the brands um, modernizing and sophisticating their branding by going sans serif if you want. But feel free to give this a try yourselves and make sure you share your work with us on Instagram. We'd love to see it. Other than that, that's it from me for now. See you in the next video.